I'm going to do problem 33 from chapter 27 in the ninth edition. In this problem, we have a battery, and the voltage is E1, and we have six resistors arranged like this. So we're told that R1, R2, and R3 are each 2 ohms. R4 is 16 ohms. R5 is 8 ohms. R6 is 4 ohms. And we're told the current through R6 is 1.4 amps. And what we're asked to do is calculate the battery voltage. All right. So, as with many of these problems, the first thing I would do is redraw this to make it clear which elements are in series and which are in parallel. So, over here I have the battery, E1. I have this resistor, R1. And then that feeds down one path that comes back to the battery, and that's R3. Then it goes into another path that goes down to R2. Then R2 splits into two paths, and one of them is R4. And the other path from R2 is R5 and R6. So there we go. So now we've redrawn it. And again, you can see that we have R1 comes from the battery, splits into R3 and R2. R3 comes back to the battery. R2 splits into two. R4 comes back to the battery. And then R5 and R6. So this is the same as this. So now we can see what things are in series and what things are in parallel. So now before we do math, From seeing what's in series and what's in parallel, there are many things that we can determine about this circuit right away. So we can start off by seeing that since R5 and R6 are in series, then the current through them has to be the same. So I5 has to equal I6. Also, since R4 is in parallel with this combination, then when things are in parallel, the voltages have to be the same. So the voltage across R4 has to be the same as the voltage across R5 plus the voltage across R6. Now, then we have this in series with R2. And from R2, the current has to branch this way. So now we know that the current in R2 has to branch in these two different directions. So we know that I2 has to equal I4 plus I5. But as we said here, since I5 and I6 are the same, this is I4 plus I6. And since I6 is the one we're given, then whenever we're doing calculations, we use I6. We probably won't actually use I5 since they're the same, and I6 is the one that we're given. All right. So then, um, now, so now we have R2, which is in series with this. So we know that the voltage across this has to be the voltage across this, since these two branches are in parallel. So that means the voltage across R3 has to be the voltage here plus the voltage here. So this is V2 plus V4. All right. Then, since the current through R1 splits in these two directions, then the current through R1 has to equal this current plus this current. So I1 equals I2 plus I3. And then finally, since this voltage, since these, this is in series with this, then the voltage across this whole thing has to be the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R3. So finally, E1 has to equal V1 plus V3. All right? So all of these relationships are just from the fact of knowing that all of these components are in series and parallel combinations. So these are all the things we know 
before we can do all the calculations. So now we're just going to work our way back through the circuit. Right? So we know that I6 is 1.4 amps. So we know that the voltage across this has to be the current through it times the resistance of it. So that is 1.4 times 4 ohms, which is voltage across resistor 5 has got to be I5 times R5, but we know I5 and I6 are the same, so this is 1.4 times 8 ohms, 1.4 times 8, so that is 11.2 volts. So that means V4, which is V5 plus V6, is 16.8 volts. So now we have the voltage here. So we know what the voltage is here. Since this is in, in parallel with this, V4 has to equal V5 plus V6. So this is the voltage across R4. So the current through R4 is V4 over I4 which is 16.8 volts over 16 ohms, which is 1.05 amps. So that is the current here in R4. So now we know that I2 has to equal I4 plus I5 from here. So now we know what I4 and I5 are, so we can add them up, so I2 equals I4 plus I5, which is 1.05 amps plus 1.4 amps, which is 2.45 amps. So now we know I2. So that's the current here. Well, since we know the current through this resistor, and we know the resistance, then we can tell the voltage across R2. So V2 is I2 R2, so that is 2.45 amps times R2, which is 2 ohms, which is 4.9 volts. So that's the voltage here. So now we know what the voltage is here, and we know what the voltage is here, so we can calculate what the voltage is across R3. So V3 is V2 plus V4. So this is 4.9 volts plus V4 was 16.8 volts. So this is 21.7 volts. All right. So now we know what V3 is. We know what so now that we know what V3 is, we can calculate the current through R3. So I3 is just V3 over R3. So this is 21.7 volts divided by R3 is 2 ohms. So this is 10.85 amps. So now we know what I3 is, we know what I2 is, so we can figure what the current is through I1 because the current in I1 has to split into these two. So I1 equals I2 plus I3, which is 2.45 amps plus 10.85 amps. So I1 is 13.3 amps. 
So finally, now we know what the current is here, so we can figure out what the voltage is across R1. So V1 is I1 R1, so that's 13.3 amps times R1 is 2 ohms. So that is 26.6 volts. So now we're almost there. Now E1 is V1 plus V3. V3 we have here, V1 we have here. So E1 equals V1 plus V3, which equals 26.6 volts plus um, 21.7 volts. So that is 48.3 volts. So there we go. So E1 is 48.3 volts. And so again, just a reminder that what happened was all of the equations that we needed, we could figure out before doing any math by series and parallel combinations. And then we just went through and one step at a time went back and plugged in the numbers.